There you go, guys. Check this out. This was brought in to me today. It worked. It's used, but it is a crane cam. The guy at work used to race uh, go karts with a son. I mean, the cam is dated 20 years ago. Uh, and they had two different motors they ran depending on what track they ran. Uh, they did oval and road course. And, uh, I mean, his son's older now. Wow. His son's in his, I think, mid-30s now or something like that. Um, he told me he found it in the garage. He'd bring it in, and he did. It's nice. I think it's the same cam that Darren had given me. So. Ruben, this video is for you. Uh, I don't know why I'm standing here other than the fact that my airlines are right here. Ruben was showing that um, he did his thing up the wall with the copper, which acts as, I guess, a, a radiator in so many words, or a condenser is another way of wording it. And basically what he has is he has the compressor coming out, he has it plumbed right into it now, and then uh, I know he has some downspouts on it, like I have downspouts. Okay, then he put his receiver dryer after it because he said his receiver dryer was getting way too much water. Um, me personally, I'd put the receiver dryer before it and I'd put one after it. Okay, I don't think the one after it, I'd you know, buy a really nice one, but I'd put something after it. Um, you know there's heavy water going into it. You already proved it by filling up your water separator constantly. As the air sits in that copper, it's going to cool and condense, and it's going to make moisture inside there. Then you're going to rely on it to come down the pipes and out the drain. But if you're painting, and you're going to be using it for a little while, steady, uh, with the airflow, that water is not going to have time to come out of those pipes and come down, and you're going to get it out to the gun. So. I say you take the water out of the air and the, and the air that you put into the pipe you put in a dryer then you take the remaining water out after it starts to condense and then every once in a while like you said you could drain your little spickety things here you know, I got a big drop off on this one that's gotta be three feet and I'm coming down from a 12 foot ceiling up there on my loop so it comes down to, from a 12 foot ceiling I know this foundation is four feet off the ground so, whatever it is, maybe six feet. I don't know, you gotta do the math. Uh, it has to come over and down into mine. But um, when I replumb everything, there'll definitely be a water separator. This was my first one, this little one. And I didn't rely on it to do much, but it was a I was able to see what was actually coming into my system. And it was amazing, I barely ever got any water in this one. I never spit water. Uh, even when I ran a DA forever. You know, using the setup, but uh, this wasn't really here to condense the, to cool the air like you did. This was more just to trap water. It's like you guys know, it starts here. That's where the inlet is into it. It has a downspout down to the bottom of the drain. Then it has to go up. Okay, so this is that's about five feet off the ground. So it's got to go up another what seven feet to the ceiling. And it rides along the ceiling up there. I know you guys can't see how I'm pointing that. And then it comes down here. And the water's going to have a tendency to continue on here. Um, I also have a branch continuing on to the front that I don't rely on. You know, I don't rely on getting the water out of it. It's right here. Which has a spout on it. This I use if you put an air in tires. Or even an air tool or whatever. It doesn't matter. But, uh, getting back to this. Here it has to make a 90 and then go in. So the water has a tendency to be heavier and drop. But, um, and then I got that set up. And I said, I want to check to see what desk and bag is or whatever's in it. I don't know if it's a filter. And I've never had a problem. But like I said, I don't think that the PVC is going to cool it as quick as copper does. You know what I'm saying? When you see these people and they're using the evaporators, usually after the evaporator, they have like a puke tank to catch all the water. And then they're, they're grabbing the air at the top of it. So all the water that gushes out of it or spits out, because it will lay in those tubes and spit it, you know, when it gets deep enough, because it's going to be air going through water and it's going to bubble. You know, it's going to be a water trap with air going through it. 
Um, so me personally, I would have one before and after. You don't have to put a $500 one before and after, but I would put something before and after. And just like uh, Junior makes his RODI water for the fish tank, he's got electronic sensors in the, hooked in like the, for argument's sake, in the inlet and on the outlet. So he knows what's going into the unit and he knows what's coming out of the unit so he can compare the two of them so he knows if the filters are actually working. So if you get yourself a cheap uh, water separator, like that was a cheap one at the time, and you put it before and you put your better one after here, you can see what's actually happening. And uh, that's the way I go. Because you don't want to be painting Reuben, and all of a sudden you spit out a lot of water out of the gun. That'll be the end of everything. Quickly. Then you'll be praying and wishing you had that water separator, because the water separator is going to be a fraction of the price of the, the repaint that you're going to be doing. And that's what it comes down to. But like I said, that's just my opinion. Everybody does it different. Uh, at work, at work we had a separate uh, compressor just for the body shop, which is actually still laying there in a little hut behind the building. They don't want to get rid of it. Then on the side of the building, we got two massive monsters. I mean, the pipes got to be like this. The pipes got to be uh, three or four inch inlet. And that comes through the wall, the teeth together, that comes through the wall, and then we got one of those commercial, like, refrigeration water separators. You know, it's got a compressor in there, a big uh, cooling unit, and the whole deal. And, uh, that works pretty good. We still, every once in a while, get a tad bit of moisture. But, uh, I don't know. So that's just my opinion on it, Ruben. I'm sure everybody else has different opinions, and, um, you know, see what people have to say, and... You know, go with that, but a little, you know, like they say, an ounce of prevention, you know what I mean? It's only a couple of dollars more to get another one, even if it's a cheap one, just to keep some of the moisture out of that line, you know what I mean? And, uh...